Hey, good morning, Daniela. It's good to see you. I love you guys too. I pray that all is well with you on this beautiful Tuesday morning. Hey, Sister Suzette, I see you out there this morning. Good morning. God bless you. I am just excited to begin another week with you all. Um, I thank God for each and every one of you that make it a point to come and join me every single morning, every morning almost every morning, right, um, from Tuesday to, through Friday, because we don't do Mondays, but, um, you know, on Mondays while I'm regrouping, I'm thinking about you all, I'm praying for you all, I'm preparing for you all. So the good news is I'm finally starting to feel better. I know uh, I was... Uh, I was on uh, over the weekend with Willie, and um, but I still wasn't feeling uh, all that well. But today, I really feel better, praise God. And by the way, speaking about um, over the weekend with Willie, thank you all for those of you who were able to join. I know I did not make a formal announcement during the week that we were going to do this, uh, but that's because he woke up just with the Lord, just downloaded some things. And he really wanted to share. And so I had been praying and praying and praying about him joining me for a live. And when he said that God had downloaded some things, um, I jumped all over it. I was like, okay, let's do this. So thank you to those of you who were able to join us. We appreciated your questions. We appreciated your interaction. We just appreciated all of the excitement and um receptiveness that you brought to that live. And a lot of people are asking, will we do it again? The answer is absolutely yes. Hey, Sister Veronica, good morning. Hey, Sister Lucy, good morning. Hey, Toya, Toya, good morning, sweetheart. Hey, Bridget, good morning. Yeah, okay, awesome, Sister Suzette. Yeah, when you get a chance, check it out. Uh, we had a really lively discussion, and I love it whenever I'm able to you know, I enjoy doing everything with Willie. So to be able to do a live with him and just, you know, he has so much wisdom inside of him. And I am excited of what God, about what God is birthing and doing in this season, right? So um, thank you all. And yeah, um, you know, be on the lookout. We may come back again this weekend as the Lord leads, but we're definitely going to be doing more of that. So anyway, it is so awesome to see you all. Happy and blessed Tuesday. It is the 18th of February, y'all. Where is the month of February going? Like, seriously, it is moving hard and fast. And before you know it, we're going to be in March. And then before you know it, we're going to be in April. And, and oh, my goodness, like, the year is just going by so quickly. I do pray, though, that you're not allowing it to go by and, um, and not, um, first of all, enjoy it. That's important. You know, make sure that you are enjoying each day. You know, they say stop and smell the roses, but make sure that there's not a day that goes by that you are not missing what God is doing because you're so focused on what's not happening. Did you catch that? Right? Because sometimes we can become so focused on, on what's not happening that we miss what's happening. So make sure that you are not missing the great things that God is doing. Make sure that you're not... Um, uh, neglecting to celebrate the small um, victories that you have. Sometimes we have our eyes set so much on the big thing that we miss all the little things. And guess what? The big thing is made up of lots of little things, right? Hey, Sister Edna, good morning. Hey, Sister Jeanette, good morning to you. So as time is flying by, make sure that you are not missing the things that God is doing. And then secondly, make sure that you are getting done the things that God has put before us to get done, right? Now, I don't know about you, but every day I'm battling distractions, you know, things that want to come in and make themselves important, that they're really not important in the grand scheme of things, that there's some priorities, there's some goals, there's some things that God has set that he has spoken to my heart. You know, we talked about writing the vision and making it 
explaining. There's some things that he has spoken directly to my heart, to my husband's heart, that we know that beyond a shadow of a doubt, this is what we are supposed to be doing. And then life happens. Things are coming in, you know, that want to vie for our attention and our affection and our time. And we all have to be careful that we're not missing out on the opportunity to do what God has for us to do, because that's where the blessings are. And I said it again, that the blessings is in where, in being where God would have us to be and doing what God would have us to do. Amen, Sister Jeanette. Thank you. And it was awesome to have you on the live with us. Amen. Hey, Jennifer, good morning to you. God bless you. It's awesome to see you. Sister Regina Maxi, it's great to see you, beloved. Hey, Irene, good morning, good morning. So, yes. Yeah, so, anyways, you all are coming on. Click share. I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to start my watch party so we can get this thing rolling. If y'all are ready to get this thing rolling, just, just say, let's go. I'm ready. Hey, Michelle, good morning to you. I'm ready to, you know, share with you what God has laid on my heart this morning. I believe it's going to be a blessing. I also believe that it's going to challenge some of us. How many of you, I, I like to be challenged by the word. I like to be challenged by God because that just lets me know that there's still some more growing. There's still some more developing that we all need to do. Amen. Hey, Felicia, <laughs> what's the word? What's up, girl? It's good to see you. Hey, Denise, sis, good morning. I'm praying for you. Um, Suzette, let's go. Right. That's that's what I'm saying. You ready, Sister Barbara? Hey, Sister Barbara, it's good to see you. God bless you, beloved. Right, right. Good morning, Denisha. Good morning to you. God bless you, beloved. Y'all are ready? Well, good. So I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, start my watch party. And um, then we're going to pray, and then we are going to hear what thus saith the Lord. I love it when God speaks. When he speaks, every other voice needs to be quiet in my life. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. Okay. Awesome. Father God, I just come to you right now, just thanking you, God, and just saying, have your way today. We just want to hear from you. We thank you for this place and this time that we're able to come together and just get a refilling and, and just be refreshed and just be renewed and our spirits are uplifted. And, and Father God, even sometimes we're challenged, but in a good way. You know, your word comes forth and your word is like a mirror. And when we hold it up, we see you know, that we're missing the mark in some areas, but we thank you, God, that you don't condemn us. Father God, we bind condemnation and the spirit of self-condemnation right now. Father God, we receive any loving conviction that you have for us this morning where we recognize that we are beneath our potential. We recognize that you're calling us to come up higher. We recognize you're calling us to go deeper. You recognize that you're calling us to abandon ourselves. Father God, so we just... We want to hear from you today. Holy Spirit, speak like never before. We thank you um, that your word is alive, that your word is uh, real, that your word is relevant. And we pray that your word hits us right where it needs to hit us this morning. That when we leave this live, we are um, excited about not just the word that we heard, but the word that we're getting ready to put into action. So we thank you and we praise you, Holy Spirit. Have your way. He just said that with me this morning. We invite you here, Holy Spirit. Have your way. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, Shawana, good morning. It's great to see you, beloved. Yes, yeah, Sister Barbara, it's really it's awesome to see you. Quite up. Hey, let's go. That's right. It's awesome to see you. Praise God. Hey, Kiki, good morning to you. Uh-huh. I see you. I see what you said, Sister Regina. Well, we're going to pray for the Lord to just give us insight this morning. And so, listen, don't do me a favor. Please don't forget to uh, click share. I saw many of you that you did click share, and you invited others to join us this morning. So thank you so much for doing that. I always say that sharing is caring. Amen. You just never know 
who might be scrolling down your timeline and they really need a word of encouragement and oh, there you go. You post a live and they join us and the Holy Spirit speaks exactly to them what they need to hear. Amen. So this morning, y'all, we are in uh, Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. If someone would please um, put that in the chat for me, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. I love this scripture, and I pray that the Holy Spirit will help me to just kind of break it down so that it will increase our understanding, and even more, it will get us excited to actually do what the scripture says. Hey, Selena, good morning to you. Thank you for putting that up there for me, Sister Suzette. I greatly appreciate you hear the word of God, Matthew 16, 24. It says, then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way. That's how the New Living Translation says it. If you want to follow me, Jesus says, you got to give up your own way. Other translations say you got to deny yourself. So he says, you got to deny yourself, give up your own way. And then he says, take up your cross and follow me. Anybody familiar with that scripture? Have you heard that scripture before? And have you wondered, hey, Sister Vaughn, good morning. Have you wondered what exactly does Jesus mean when he says, deny yourself, you know, deny myself, um, you know, give up my way. And then what is this business about taking up the cross? Well, I'm glad that you're curious about that, right? Because I just want to say to you right off the bat that today is a good day to die. Somebody just put that in the chat, that today is a good day to die. Today is a good day to die. And when I'm talking about dying, I'm not talking about physical death. I'm talking about a spiritual death. I'm talking about death to some things that will cause us to not be effective, impactful followers of Christ. Today is a good day to die. First of all, what Jesus is talking about in the scripture, right, is that we have to be get to the place. He says, if you want to be my, my follower, you got to give up your own. In other words, we say it all the time, but this is what the scripture is talking about, where we say, God, not my will, but your will be done. And that's, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll say this to you, that, that is a, a dangerous, but very profound and probably the most impactful prayer you could ever pray. And the one who prayed that was Jesus. Now, if you can get this in your spirit, right, that Jesus is God and he comes to the earth and he is about to go through something extremely traumatic and even though jesus is god he's still human and in his humanness he recognizes that in order to do the will of god his will has to be put to the side his will has to be done away with and so here's jesus in the garden he is about to be crucified and because the god part of him is so active he has an idea of what he's about to go through he knows he's about to suffer he knows he's about to be betrayed he knows he's about to be lied upon he knows he's about to be persecuted come on some of us know ahead of time some things that we're about to go into some things that we're dealing with with some relationships some things we're dealing with on the job some things that we already know ahead of time before going into it yeah this is not going to be a walk in the park this is not going to be a, a kumbaya session. This is not going to be anything that's going to feel good to me. And you know ahead of time before you go in that, yeah, this is going to be challenging. This is going to be difficult. And this is where Jesus was. Jesus was about to face something so incredibly traumatic and, and painful and hurtful. And yet he is in the garden. And here's what he says. He says a lot of times what this, you know, there are things that I'm going through, and I, 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 just like Jesus, you know, Jesus said, listen, if there's any way, somebody say, if there's any way, I know many of you have prayed this prayer, God, if there is any way that you can just get me, just, just get rid of this right here, God, if you can just snatch me out of this, God, if you can just remove this person, God, if you would just bless me with this job, God, if you just wipe out my debt, like, if there is any way, God, 
that you can snap your finger, <laughs> that you can, your hand can move, that you can just, you know, cause, if you can just do this, God, without me having to go through this process, come on, anybody know what I'm talking about when I'm, I say the word process, it, God, if there's any way I can bypass this, if there's any way that I can kind of get around this, God, if there's any way that maybe I can just deal with a little bit of the repercussions, but not all the, God, if there's any way, would you do that for me? And then after saying that, he says, but not my will be done, but your will be done. Because Jesus knew that on the other side of the will of God came the blessings. You understand? The blessings of God are not followed. They're not following our will. They're following the will of God. That when we align ourselves with the will of God, when we do what God is asking, what God is expecting, what God is commanding, that there is a blessing. The Bible tells us that God honors and God blesses what? Our obedience. And so I believe that God is okay. Uh, it sounds like he's just Lucy. I believe that God is okay with us saying, listen, God, you know, if there's any way, like I really don't want to go through this divorce. I really don't want to go through, you know, I, I'm about to get laid off. I really don't want, you know, God, I really don't want to have to uh, go through this relationship being over. I really don't, you know, whatever it is, God, I really don't want to deal with this. But if doing this, if going through this, if losing this, if doing this is going to make me more like Jesus, if doing this is going to align me more to your will, if doing this is going to develop the character, of Jesus' character in me, if doing this is going to develop the fruit of the Spirit, then not my will, but your will be done. Good morning, Tanjia. So God can handle us saying, you know, God, is there any way? Because Jesus did it. He said, is there any way? But at the end of that, he said, but not my will be done. So this scripture is Jesus is, listen, you want to be my disciples? You want to know, you want to be known as mine? You want to know, want to be known as be as rolling with me, as connected? Then you, you, you got to. You got to give up your way. You got to deny yourself. And then here's the other thing he says. He said, you got to take up your cross. Take up your cross. I need somebody to say that this morning. Before you even really understand what that means, I need to take up my cross. I need to take up my cross. And we need to take up our cross daily. Now, here's the thing. Let's understand what it means to take up our cross, because that's where some of us are not in the full understanding of it. Because many people think, right, this is what we think. We think that taking up our cross means a sickness. We think that taking up our cross means dealing with an unsafe spouse or a harsh boss, right? But listen, a cross, flow with me, is not something that is forced upon you of which you don't have a choice. A cross is something that we are willing to take up. Let me say that again. Because a cross is not something that is forced upon us. Because that's what we are. We all, we look at our unsaved spouse, we call that a cross. We look at our child acting out, we say that's a cross. We look at our finances, say, oh, that's a cross. We look at our illness and we call it a cross. But the true identification of the cross means that it is something that we are willing to take up. Jesus willingly laid down his life. He wasn't forced to do it. It's something he chose. And therefore, Jesus is calling us to do the same. So my question to you is, what do you need to willingly, <laughs> what do you need to willingly lay down? What is that cross that when you take it up, you're saying, God, I am laying this down because I understand that in order to be a disciple, in order to be identified as your child, in order to, to overcome, and I got this thing, I got it, I got to take it up. I got to bear it. I got to go through it. Because in those days, a cross was symbolic of death. 
right? So taking up our cross is simply another way of saying, listen, I'm willing to put this to death. And my question is, what cross do you need to take up this morning? Listen, that cross, like I said, right? That cross is not your boss. <laughs> that cross is not your spouse. That cross is not your child that's getting on your nerves or who's being rebellious. Here, here's a here's an I uh, uh, um, here's a, a representation of some of our crosses. You ready? God, I'm willing to put to death my cross, my pride. That I'll allow people to help me, and I stop thinking that I'm right all the time, and I stop believing that I need to have the last word. Help me, Holy Ghost. Uh huh. And I and I stop thinking that because I go to church every Sunday and every Wednesday, I'm there every time the doors are open, and I know how to uh, uh, spout a lot of uh, a lot of scriptures, and I know how to pray in tongues, and and I, I I can worship like yeah. And so because of that, I think I'm somewhere that I'm really not. Help me to lay that down, God. Help me, help me. That's my cross because I have developed a sense of spiritual pride. I look at other people and I judge them and I have no compassion for them. I judge, I, as a matter of fact, I judge where I think I am based on where I think others are. And well, God, at least I'm not in the club every Saturday night. Well, God, at least I'm not shacking up. Well, God, you understand all of that is pride. And we have to be careful. And so Jesus says, if we, help me, Holy Ghost, if we are willing to, if, if we are going to be known as his disciples, these are the things that we have to, we have to bear. We have to go through the process of letting God <laughs> help us become more like Jesus. That's a cross. You understand? Cross, a cross for some of us, listen, this is just real talk, is the spirit of unforgiveness. You know, we hear people preach it all the time, right? Forgiveness is, is not is not for them, it's for you. And it's true. You know, forgiveness doesn't, it, it frees you. Forgiveness is like, unforgiveness is like drinking a glass of can, a, a glass full of cancer and expecting the other person, a poison, and expecting the other person to die. We hear all that stuff, but can I tell you something? The reason why unforgiveness is like a cross that we have to bear is because we have to get to the place that we want to forgive. And let me tell you why we should want to forgive. Two reasons. Number one, Jesus forgave us when we were at a place that we were not even forgivable. And that's probably some of the people you're dealing with. That in your mind, they're not forgivable. In your mind, man, they don't deserve forgiveness, right? Secondly, the Bible tells us that if we don't forgive others, that God is not going to forgive us. Now, listen, I don't know about you, but I need forgiveness on a daily basis. Sometimes the forgiveness I need is not even what I'm doing. It's just what I'm thinking. Sometimes I get up in the morning and the thoughts that hit me before my feet hit the ground, I, sometimes I have to repent. Because sometimes I wake up and worry comes. Like right away I start to worry. And the Bible tells us we're not to be anxious for anything. Sometimes I wake up in the morning and I might be feeling some type of way about a person. So what I'm saying is I need forgiveness every single day. And so, they, and listen, and unforgiveness puts a wedge between us and God. You know, so it places distance between us. I don't want anything in my life that places distance between me and God. And so for some of us, unforgiveness, forgiveness is like a cross that you need to bear. You need to take it up, beloved, and you need to release that person, and you need to go one step further, and you need to bless them. You know why? Because even the person that gets on your nerves the most, the person that you may not feel have any future, and God has a purpose for them. 
And so we want to bless them. God, I release this person. Releasing them doesn't mean that it's okay what they did. In fact, there's some people that we're going to release and we're going to forgive them. It doesn't mean that I'm going to be, uh, you know, reconnecting myself to you. It doesn't mean that I'm going back to hanging out with you. It doesn't mean that I'm going to be having Sunday dinner with you. It doesn't mean that I'm going to be going to lunch with you and having coffee. No, it doesn't mean that. It just means that I have released myself from the shackles that, that from what has shackled me to you, that unforgiveness that has had me connected to you, and so it, it interrupts my whole life because I can't even flourish in my other relationships because of the way I'm feeling. See, that's what it does. So then you can release them and say, you know what? I stopped trying to be your warden because when you're trying to, when you are keeping somebody in unforgiveness, it's like you're trying to keep them in a prison. You understand, you understand like, like when you see them, you just, you know, I'm going to let them know I'm upset with them. I'm not going to be nice. I'm going to turn up my, they going to know I'm upset, you know, and we do it. That's how we do. But can I tell you, it takes so much energy and so much time to be the warden of somebody else's soul. Can I say that again? It takes a lot of energy and it takes a lot of time to be the warden over somebody else's soul. Free them and free yourself and then bless them, right? That's, that, that's what it looks like to take up your cross. Release and forgive and let it go. So taking up our cross, listen, it's not something that's forced on us. It's something that we need to get to the place that we are willing to do it, that we want to do it, that we understand that in doing this, it will help us to walk more in the fullness of the life that God has for us. Regret, bitterness, resentment, offense, any of that. Listen, it's your cross and it's time to take it up and die to, die to all of that. Because that's how we know that we really, truly belong to Jesus. So he says, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. You know what following Jesus means? It means that we commit our whole life to him. Listen, not just a little bit that we want to give to him. You understand? It, it means that we are, whatever it is, listen, following Jesus means that he's not just our savior. He is our Lord. Will you say that with me this morning? Jesus is my Lord. What does that mean that he's, he's our Lord? It means he tells us what to do. It means he runs the show. It means if he says stop and we still want to go, we stop. It means that if he says go and if we want to stop, we keep going. It means that he, if, if he says let go of this relationship, guess what? We let it go. If, if he says it's time to Leave this job and go, you know, and apply for this job and, and his favor he's sending it. That's what it means. It means that he says it's time to relocate and, and pick yourself up and go to another place. That's what it means. It means that even though you've been at that church for 49 years and you got uh, baptized there and, and your mama them go and your and your daddy, your grandma go, but God is leading you somewhere else. That's what it means for Jesus to be our Lord. It means that we do what he tells us to do, not just Savior. So Jesus is my Lord. You know what that means? That I give up all right to me. I give up all right to do what I want to do. It's like what we said in the beginning. It's not my will, God, but your will be done. But sometimes the, the, the way that we want to interact with Jesus is we want to give him the, the, uh, the title of Lord when it's convenient to us. Or when we really, really need him. Lord, I need you today. No, we need, Lord, we need you every day. We need God in every day, in every way, in every decision. So it's not just when we figure out that we are, uh, that we're nothing without him. It's not when we figure out that something really is too hard for man, but it, it, it's impossible for me, but it's possible for him. No, it's not in just in those moments. It's every day. Somebody say it's every day. That we need Jesus to be our Lord every single day. And this is what Jesus is saying. Listen, for you to identify, 
Like, don't even think that we're identifying with him. Don't even think that we are being his disciples if we are not willing to do what that scripture says. The scripture says we got to deny ourselves. That means that you need to get you out the way. It's not about your preferences. It's about what Jesus wants. It's about what Jesus says. It's about what the word says. It's about living by the word. It's not about living by our desires. It's about living by God's desires for us. So it says, you want to be my disciple? You got to deny yourself. You got to deny what you want. You got to give up your way. And then he says, you got to take up your cross. And what is your cross? Is that thing that is difficult, but you are willing. You are finally willing to lay it down. You're finally willing to give it up. I don't know what your cross is. Sister Veronica, your cross may be very different from mine. Sister Annette, what God is requiring for you to take up, it will probably look very different from mine. But what it is, is we all know we have an idea. And if you don't, I pray the Holy Spirit will give you revelation today as you are on this live. That whatever, if you're saying, Sister Ann, I don't know what my cross is, then I pray that the Holy Spirit will die download revelation to you and help you understand that this thing that you that you know is like literally like you're, you're you're wanting god to force some things on you god says i'm not gonna force anything i'm waiting for you to get to the place that you are willing to pick it up that you are willing to give it up you're willing to let it go and then he says you gotta follow me you gotta make me your lord not just your savior Listen, as we close out, I want to read that same scripture in the message translation because this is so this this is so thick, y'all. I, I I like how the message translation says it. This is Matthew, um, <clears throat> Matthew chapter sixteen, and the message translation is verses twenty four through twenty six. Listen to this. Just just listen with your spiritual ears for a second. This is so powerful the way the message breaks it down. It says, "Then Jesus." went to work on his disciples. <laughs> and he says, anyone, listen, who intends to come with me has to let me lead. That's a question already for you and I. Are we letting God lead? You got decisions you need to make. You have uh, things you need to accomplish. Are you letting God lead? Right? So it says, Jesus went to work on his disciples. He says, anyone who intends to come with me has to let me lead. Here's how the message translation said. You're not in the driver's seat. I am. You know that song that we all sing, Jesus take the wheel. I've said it to you before. Man, I tell you what, not only do I want Jesus to take the wheel, but I'll be willing to go and sit in the back seat if that's what it takes. I, I may not even need to be a a, a, a passenger in the passenger seat because I might still be trying to direct some things. Jesus says, you're not in the driver's seat. I am. So get that whole notion about Jesus is my co-pilot. Ain't nothing cold about Jesus. Jesus don't want to be your co-pilot. He want to be the pilot. He wants to be the head one in charge. He wants to be flying the whole thing. He wants to be running the whole deal. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Jesus says, you're not in the driver's seat. I am. And then here's what this, uh, this version is so powerful. He says, don't run from suffering. Embrace it. Jesus led by the greatest example. He didn't run from suffering, and thank God he didn't. Because he embraced the cross, you and I have the ability to sit here today and fellowship one with the other and to be able to read the word and, and live the word and, and have that intimate, personal, direct relationship with God because of Jesus embracing suffering. So he says, don't run from suffering, embrace it. He says, follow me and I'll show you how. Well, how do I embrace suffering, Jesus? He said, follow me and I'll show you how. Because I'm the greatest example of how to embrace suffering. He says, follow me and I'll show you how. Listen to this. Self-help is no help at all. <laughs> self-sacrifice is the way my way to finding yourself your true self isn't that something self-help is a no-go self-sacrifice that's the way that's how we find ourselves our true self this is what the scripture says and then he says what kind of deal is it to get everything you want but lose yourself 
See, <laughs> we have to be careful that we don't miss Jesus because we still want our way. We're not willing to lay down or take up our cross and we're not willing to follow him and let him be Lord. I don't know what situation you might be dealing with today, but I just encourage you to make the decision for yourself. Don't, don't wait for God to have to force you. Don't even wait for something awful to happen to like, okay, now it's, it's the last resort versus your first choice. Make embracing your cross, whatever your cross is, you know what that cross is, is that thing that <laughs> you feel is, is like, is, is really like persecuting you on a daily basis. You understand? It's that thing that is, is, is taking away your peace. It's that thing that causes you to have anxiety and is that it is that 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 what Jesus wants is for you to embrace it like say okay all right God I embrace this because I understand that you're using this to develop my character I kind of think about that scripture right where it talks about the thorn in the side that you know it's like here we are we're praying away the cross like oh I don't want to carry this I don't want to bear this it's kind of like that thorn oh my god god if you would just remove this and God says no I'm not going to remove it but what I am going to give you is the grace that is sufficient it's the same thing with the cross Jesus says if you will if you're willing to take up your cross and if you're willing to follow me if you're willing to trust me he said I'll show you I'll give you the grace that you need because taking up our cross, there's nothing that makes us more like Jesus than when we embrace and choose to take up our cross. And remember what I said at the beginning, taking up your cross is, is your cross is not another person. You understand? Your, your cross is not a sickness. Your, your, your cross is that thing that you, we need to all get to the place that we willingly lay it down. Father God, I thank you for this word today. And I do believe by the power of your Holy Spirit that revelation is coming forth, that there are many on here that are recognizing that they have seen this whole notion of taking up the cross as we've seen it incorrectly, God. Because we look at a person, we, we look at an illness, we look at it, but Father God, it's, it's that thing within us that's preventing us from being more like your son, Jesus. And it's that thing that we're willing to crucify, we're willing to, to, to kill off, we're willing to let it die so that who you called and created us to be can live. Mm, thank you, God. That's a beautiful picture. Father, God, I pray for every person under the sound of my voice right now who they may be saying, I, do, I, don't, I don't know if I could do this. I don't feel like I have the strength. I don't feel like I thank you that you tell us that we can do all things through Jesus, through Christ, who gives us everything we need to get it done. So Father God, I speak your incredible grace over every person under the sound of my voice who truly, truly, truly desire to be identified and known as your disciples, as your sons, as your daughters. Help us to deny ourselves today. Oh, there's some things that our flesh wants, our flesh desires. There's some things that we feel that we would do better, be better if we had them, if we did it, if we had this title, if we had this job, if we had this vehicle, if we had this home, if we had this relationship. These are things that we think. But Father, God, help us to lay down our thoughts to pick up your thoughts. Help us to lay down our will to pick up your will. Help us to deny ourselves. And we thank you for the grace to do that. Father God, I thank you for how you're going to continue to speak this word and just drive it deep into the crevices of our souls for the rest of this day, the rest of this week. That as that cross presents itself, that rather than run from it, we'll embrace it and say, okay, Father, I'm willing to go through this. I'm willing to go through with this. I'm willing to, to get this done. I'm willing to, um, to, to go through with this 
apology. I'm willing to release my pride. I'm willing to give up my way. I'm, I'm willing to humble myself. Whatever it is, I'm willing to do it. I will take up this cross so that the Jesus in me will come forth even more powerfully. We thank you for this word of God. I bless every person with the grace that is sufficient to take up our cross this day. Today is a good day to die, and we embrace it. Die to ourselves so we can live for Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. It's a good day to die, y'all. And I pray that, uh, right, Sister Regina, right, we got to lay it down. It is, Sister Jeanette. That's beautiful. She says it's a beautiful exchange. I'll surrender God's grace. Absolutely. That is beautiful. You're welcome, Jeanette. God bless you. Amen, Quaida. Ty, God bless you. It's great to see you. That's right. Yep, that's right, Sister Clarice. That it is all we need is the Lord. Amen. He'll help you, Sister Annette. You better believe it. God bless you, Veronica. Amen. Love you, sis. Yes. In Jesus' name, Sister Barbara. Amen. God bless you. I appreciate that. Nicole, God bless you. Sister Edna, you're welcome. All right, I love you all. Please don't forget to click share. And God willing, we'll be back together tomorrow because it's going to be out there, y'all. We're going to get over the hump together as we just get into the word together. Hey, Sister Linda, God bless you. You're welcome, Sister Felicia. God bless you. All right, you all. Love you very much. Have an awesome day. <laughs> yes, amen. God bless you.